Hey everybody, it's Valen from Mischief of Mice, here with another Getting Started with Thomcraft 4. Today we're going to be covering Artifice, which is this tab here with the little uh, steampunk looking goggles. We're going to be covering uh, infusion, some new tools and weapons, lamps, shields, mirrors, all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, now this is all still part of getting started. Uh, there is plenty, plenty to do in Thaumcraft. Um, now I'm going to try and compact it all as much as I can into here. So let's get into Infusion right away. Okay, here I am at an area that I've already set up just to look real fancy and pretty. Yours can just be plain old on grass if you want to get it started out like that, but I have infinite resources being in creative mode. So, what we're doing here is, as you notice, I've done a lot of research on this tab. And just as you go, you'll end up unlocking more and more. Uh, but this is the one we're looking at here, Infusion. So, first you're going to want to make yourself a runic matrix with the uh, required setup and, of course, a bit of uh, mana in your wand. Then you're going to want at least one arcane pedestal. This recipe will make you two to start with. And then you're going to want to make some, uh, essentially, a setup like this, which I'm going to do for you. Plus, you're going to need to have plenty left in your wand. Once again, another reason why we ended up uh, getting this uh, gold-banded greatwood wand. So, let's start off, and I'll show you the basic setup here on how to make one of these. So, uh, you start off, let's uh, put down these here. Oops, I think I just did that wrong already. So, put down, I believe it's the blocks first, yes, or the bricks first. So you put down four bricks on the corners of a 3x3 three three area. You put down a pedestal on top of that. Put down something in between so you can put your runic matrix up on top of it. Then break that in between block. Put down your arcane blocks. And then tap it with your wand. And you've got yourself your infusion altar. Now, you're going to need more arcane pedestals for this. I actually have mine set into the ground, and I have a whole lot of them. Usually, people just start off with some basics. Uh, you shouldn't need more than uh, four to start with to surround it. Um, but I do recommend that you have usually around uh, eight or more. Um, and the good thing is, is that I, as you see here, I have hoppers hooked up to each of these. So if I toss in items on here, they will actually, oops, it went into the wrong hopper, but it will actually end up going into those. And you'll find out why that's useful later on. But for now, just know that you can do that. And you can have these uh, actually below or uh, on the same level or even a uh, level above it. Uh, I believe this infusion altar will reach out a decent distance, like about uh, 12 or so blocks from the center. And it will actually uh, also register about three blocks above and below. So you can have things set up. Now to explain what the heck all this extra decoration is. In Fusion Altar, what that does is it takes uh, Essentia, the liquefied aspects that we did in the previous episode, and it will apply them to uh, items and tools to make them better or new, unique items. Um, and with this in mind, there are sometimes chances of bad things happening. Uh, items being or ingredients being destroyed, uh, damage being dealt to you, um, all sorts of horrible things could happen. But usually it's very low risk, especially for a lot of the entry level stuff. Now the best way to uh, make sure that you're doing this properly is to keep everything symmetrical. So uh, for instance, these items here uh, are also to enhance the uh, the infusion altar so that you do not get this uh, ne the negative effects. The more of these you have around it in a symmetrical fashion, the better off you'll be. Now I usually end up trying to make it so that it's symmetrical on all sides. So if you notice I have like two creeper heads here and here and on all the other corners. I just try to make it so that no matter what it's uh, got symmetry going around the entire square. Now I've got the same color 
uh, candles going around everywhere so that no matter what corner it's on they're all the same colors on every one same thing with these crystals so you can add in all sorts of stuff and then just I did these oops this is one of the side effects you could possibly get just for going into uh, forbidden magic in uh, thumbcraft but uh, I just added these for decoration and those for some light so that we could see what we're doing um, but you can set it up in any way you want. A lot of people, they'll tend to take all these extra things here because they feel that they clutter up the area. They may put them underground by a block or two so that they're not even visible. Or they may even put them just above the altar. It's all up to you and how you want to set it up. So, uh, how is this going to work? Well, we're going to get into that next. What we're, we're going to do is the pickaxe of the core. So, this is done in the arcane infusion area. Now you're going to need some uh, aspects here, or uh, essentia, and you're going to need a few ingredients. So I'm going to get those ready, and then we'll be back in a sec. Alright, I'm back, and we have the ingredients. Everything is set up. I have eight of each of these items here, which according to this is Ignis, Perfodio, and Census. We have eight of each, plus I have two diamonds, two greatwood logs, and four fire shards around one thaumium pickaxe. Now to explain why I have double the recipe, it's because in case this thing has any kind of issue, it will sometimes destroy an item or even knock it off the pedestal. Now in order to prevent it from trying to use up more of these three ingredients than I have, I always end up making sure that I have two. That's why I have the hoppers here. So you drop a couple in there, and you always have the backup set and ready to go. Now you can do it old school way, and just uh, if uh, if stuff goes wrong, you try and grab it, put it back on the pedestal, or you keep extras in your um, inventory. But I prefer to uh, just have it automatically set up so that it does that. Now it is recommended that you keep more than you need of each of the uh, essentia because if you have something wrong it's going to want to draw more and uh, even if not uh, if there is some kind of issue with it then it may end up uh, causing uh, let's see if I can find something here a bit more challenging yet. right here you can see instability is high on something this crazy um, whereas if you go with the pickaxe instability is negligible so you're probably not really going to even see any of the um, problems with this one at all especially since I've got all these enhancers around the entire thing and everything is very symmetric so what you do once you put all those around there according to the uh, diagram that is shown here one on each side uh, is you just put your thaumium pickaxe in the middle and you then right click the runic matrix <laughs> And I do recommend that you uh, wear your goggles of revealing, so you can see on the right there, it's telling me the numbers of everything that's going, as well as it's got the little uh, key up with pictures above the runic matrix. Once all those ingredients are sucked in, it then starts absorbing the ingredients, and sometimes it will take from the same spot, that's okay, it still registers everything as being uh, symmetric. And if it doesn't destroy anything, you know, like uh, from errors, then you can you just get those back, and there's no uh, harm done. And there we go, pickaxe of the core, pretty cool item to use, which I'll be going over shortly in uh, just a second here as we go over the new tools and weapons. All right, back in a sec. First, we're going to be covering pickaxe of the core. Now, this is a pretty cool tool. It's changed over uh, the different iterations of Thumbcraft, uh, but it is very handy. Uh, to give you an example of its non-pick-like abilities, if you right-click while you're, uh, like, you can reach a surface, so like if I right-click in the air, nothing happens, but if I right-click uh, on a wall, it shows you any valuable ores, water, and lava nearby. Now, I placed all this just so you guys would have an idea of what we're looking at, but it's pretty darn cool. Now, it, it only goes out about, say, 10 blocks or so, maybe a little bit more for some of the ores, but I find this very valuable if you're mining and you find yourself there's a giant lava lake or if you're mining and you uh, want to get some obsidian you don't know if it's multiple levels of lava deep you can actually find out it will let you know so that is really really cool now another one of its abilities uh, besides it just being fantastic to use is uh, when you mine
you may end up getting a native iron cluster which as uh, you may know will equal more iron when you end up uh, smelting it it will smelt faster and double the ore so it's just an automatic possibility for getting double ores there you go whoops unless of course you uh, spoil it with lava but you get the idea pretty darn cool and uh, as we uh, I just showed you it does require a diamond so that it, it can also do that but it is a very valuable and nice tool that isn't too bad to make out alright on to the next one next up is one of my favorites the axe of the stream now as you can see here it's once again not too complex of a recipe very similar to the uh, pick of the core it is another arcane infusion with a negligible instability and it has a few unique abilities um, so I already have one in my uh, uh, ownership here now if you hold shift it works just like uh, whoops let me get out of uh, creative mode here it works just like a regular axe but if you actually will just chop with it without holding shift it gives this bubble effect and takes the farthest piece of wood away from you and chops backwards towards you and then it also gives a slightly rapid uh, effect of getting rid of the leaves from the tree that you just chopped down so here let me show that to you again and it takes the farthest one away and chops back towards you so it'll even go down as well and bring back to the one that you're cutting on so that's really cool but you gotta be careful if uh, multiple trees are connected or close to each other it could actually do that now if I hold right click if you'll notice things will actually come towards me as well so it's kind of its own magnet in a way so having a axe of the stream plus a pickaxe of the core you can end up getting quite a lot of uh, quite a lot done in a short amount of time so uh, I also like to use it as a damaging item because it does have well I mean I've got sharpness 3 on this one but it is a pretty effective uh, weapon as well okay the next one is going to be the sword of the Zephyr this one is uh, pretty unique in its abilities as well uh, it's made with air shards instead of the other uh, water or fire shards like we did with the other tools plus a few different uh, essentia items and once again it's negligible uh, but it does have some special abilities um, one is if you right click with it it will actually create a wind uh, whirlwind around you let me uh, do this so you can see it better and it will lift you up in the air while you do it now if I was not in creative mode I probably would have taken fall damage so keep that in mind it is a slow effect so you're not exactly uh, going up really fast but while that's going on you are you are blocking just like you would with a normal sword plus you will deflect projectiles coming in and slowly push enemies away that may be uh, trying to get close to you actually let me get some uh, spiders in here too because they will probably try and get to me pretty good here so let me change my game mode and we will spawn a few spiders so you can see they're trying to get to me and they technically can't because I'm blowing them away so something to keep in mind and with this it sweeps in a large area so you can see I was attacking one enemy but I was hitting multiples during that time So you can see the arrows are deflecting off of me if they are shooting, well, if they're not shooting each other. It doesn't always work, I mean it's not 100% reliable, but you get the idea. And on to the next one. Alright, the next one here we have is the Shovel of the Earth Mover. This one here is pretty cool for uh, any fast moving that you may have. That here you go and that is if you uh, hold shift first of all you will see this weird box appear uh, what this is is this is an area that it will actually place blocks so to give an example I will start digging and it also digs in a 3 by 3 area according to the face that you're choosing so right now this tells you that 
you are actually going to dig one down from this in this uh, basic area. So if I were to choose the side face, it's saying that it's basically giving you an idea, one block forward, of where it is that you will dig. Plus, the shadow that you're seeing right now is where it will actually place blocks. If I right click, so you can see here, I just placed a bunch of those back down. And so on. So I can actually dig all these out, and then I could put all of them back again. Just like that. Just by left clicking or right clicking. Left clicking to dig, right clicking to put, to put it back down. It's pretty darn unique. Uh, it's a building tool as well as it is a um, digging. So you can actually dig quite well, you know, horizontally, plus you can do it that way. Now if you want to change the way that it is so that it's not uh, horizontal uh, when you're uh, on a face, you can actually change that. Hit the G key, at least that's the default, and then you see now it is uh, the reverse. So it will actually place blocks in the other fashion. So instead of placing this, yeah, you see now it created a wall away from me instead. So, like so. Now, oops, I just dug myself out of here. <laughs> Got to be careful how you place this stuff. Because you may end up placing, uh, if you end up placing the walls instead, you may end up uh, burying yourself in place. So, alright, and on to the next one. And here we have the hoe of growth. Now a lot of people aren't very excited about the hoes. Uh, in this case uh, it's actually pretty darn cool and one of the more useful ones that you could have. A lot of mods that have a hoe tool in there will uh, not have it really be able to do much. But this one is actually got a few unique abilities. And like the others, if you uh, press shift and use it, it will suspend any magical properties it has and uh, just act like a normal hoe. Uh, but in this case, it will till a 3x3 three three area, which is pretty darn handy. Um, plus, it will act like bone meal on plants. So let's get some seeds here and plant some of these here. And it will use the uh, durability on the uh, tool when you do that. Uh, but it is pretty darn useful. Um, also, on top of that, it is one of the only items that can grow a silverwood tree from a sapling. So if you uh, need to grow them quickly, pow, just like that. And, of course, with my friend Trusty Axe, you could then chop the thing down if you want and destroy the uh, aura nodes that may or may not spawn. All right, and the next item. Alright, the next one is going to be the Boots of the Traveler. This one here, whoops, off on the right side. It's a little bit more complex, though it's still negligible for uh, any kind of danger for making it, but it's one of the best items you could possibly get. Now, it doesn't offer much in the way of armor, but when you equip them, you then get a speed boost. So I am now walking faster. Here, let me take them back off so you can see how slow I was moving before and then re-equipping them and here's the other thing you've got a jump boost so you're now jumping two blocks high and you've got step assist which means that you just automatically walk up one block high uh, blocks so you can actually walk up hills very quickly and easily without draining your hunger bar by jumping up every single time these are great for getting around, getting away from bad guys, getting to locations, just about everything. Um, and they've got an increased uh, ability so that you take less damage from uh, fall, uh, just for a shorter distance though, but I mean right now it at least protects against uh, two blocks high, and it looks like three blocks high as well. So uh, next we're going to do the Bone Bow. This one here is uh, pretty cool. Uh, I do like it. Obviously, I am more of an archer person. And essentially, when you make it here, uh, actually, I should show you the. This is just made in the arcane workbench. It's uh, string bones and uh, entropy shard with a bit more of uh, aspects in your wand. So, what does it do? Well, when you just hold down the button, 
it will automatically start shooting rapid fire and it does a little bit more damage than your standard bow uh, it has a bit more punch and uh, once you unlock it you may have access to primal arrows which are depending upon the shard you choose may end up doing different effects uh, which you can see here I've got many of those but they are um, not as prone to uh, the infinity enchantment as regular arrows are these ones here have a one in three chance of not being used but that's because each of them has a different ability which if you look in here air arrows uh, bypass armor and have an electrical effect uh, fire arrows will set the targets on fire and do fire damage water will slow the uh, movement speed of the target earth arrows just do more damage order arrows uh, does a little less than normal but it uh, bypasses armor and leaves the uh, enemy in uh, with the weakened debuff and the entropy does a little less damage and adds a wither effect so it's pretty cool uh, definitely varies up the whole archery aspect of thumbcraft it's uh, you know got a lot more range than any of the uh, wand abilities I mean I could probably use the ice one to bounce that far but it's not really going to uh, make it as far as the bow does so uh, the other thing is that if you're shooting something rapid fire really close up it's possible that some of the arrows may bounce off because the damage isn't taken as uh, quickly yet so on to the next item here we have the arcane boar now this is a rather complex machine uh, that can be used to uh, do mining for you as you can see it's got quite a bit of ingredients for infusing as well as uh, essentia v that is needed it's got a moderate instability and that's just for the bore itself but it that won't even work without the bore base which is just made in a workbench thankfully now this will work um, similar to a quarry if you're familiar with uh, buildcraft or some other uh, mod but it's more on a horizontal plane so you place the base down and you place the uh, bore on top of it turn it back today here and you uh, put a redstone signal to it uh, you can actually there we go move that out of the way you can put a uh, chest wherever this is uh, you can use your wand to uh, move this around to different sides if you want as well as use your wand to change where it's aiming and it's pretty simple like that now for you to access it you put in here a one focus of excavation is required a pickaxe is required and then you can power this with uh, essentia as well as it states in here that you can actually um, increase its speed by feeding it essentia but we're not going to be doing that we're just going to uh, do it standard but um, I'll get into that uh, this in a moment so to start it off let me drop down a chest here which I just destroyed there we go chest and you can see nothing in the chest I set this up just so you could see it has a pickaxe of the core inside so it will end up using that uh, pickaxe's ability to on occasion get native ore clusters so I check in here you can see I've got four oh there we go native iron cluster just like that and it will continue functioning uh, but it will use up durability on the pickaxe so whichever uh, pickaxe you have in there with whatever durability you may be using ends up uh, that it's going to be um, it, it may end up using that pickaxe up over time but I mean it's a good set it and forget it let it mine uh, tool for you and it will do in a, a circle in a big tunnel as it goes down now you don't just have to put the uh, bore on top of the base you can actually put it underneath as well or both and then uh, you just flick the switch and you can have two of them going at the same time and you can see if there is no chest on the back it'll just shoot them out the back side here wherever the, uh, um, the spout is sticking out but uh, it's a pretty cool little tool there so if you don't have any uh, automatic mining options to uh, do this for you you could have this set up now as I said before let me turn these off this here is an Essentia mirror which is actually what we're getting into next is the mirrors this allows Essentia from where I've got it elsewhere to just transport from this to feed whatever uh, tools or infusion altars or whatever is nearby so let's get into that next. All right, magic mirrors. 
there are three different kinds. There's a hand mirror, an Essentia mirror, and a regular mi magic mirror. So I just showed you the Essentia mirror. Now let's show you better how it actually works. I've got a little uh, room down here set up for this. And I've got all the, uh, the Essentia that I need all cataloged and everything. Now the idea is if I look straight up, I have an Essentia mirror. Now how these work is you put one down and then you take another one and you link it to it. Uh, actually, allow me to do that without uh, being in creative mode so you can see how they actually function better. All right, put one down and you link another one to it. And therefore they are now linked. Now you can actually pick them back up and they should link together like that because you just linked one to the other. I think it actually has, yep, a location specific to it. So, let me put that mirror back down here. Any Essentia in the vicinity of this mirror will actually, if needed, get pulled back out. Whoops. Now I'm going to run over here, hold on a second, make that fly over here to this location, and then I could place it down so that it can end up being used. Now the Essentia from way over there can be used for this infusion altar. Now I've already got one set up here that is centrally located in that room so it should reach all the Essentia. And I've got that pickaxe of the core already set up here. So let me tap this and we should see the Essentia being used. As you can see, it's coming out of the mirror and going into the infusion altar. Now, let's see if I can actually get over there fast enough before it uses all of them up. Uh, and you can see it's actually going into the mirror at this end. So that's how Essentia mirrors work. They're just basically um, a shortcut. Uh, a lot of uh, mods may use pipes or something like that. This one uses uh, kind of uh, portal technology. <laughs> Uh, so, that's it for Essentia mirrors. Now, magic mirrors. These are almost identical in how they work, except it's for items, not players, of course, just items. Now, let me get into regular game mode here, and uh, I will show you on a little bit better of an area. If I can get back upstairs. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm going to put one here, and I'm going to put one here, and I'm going to throw this mirror into the other. Oh, it might help if I actually link them together. There we go. So I now have a linked mirror to that location. So if I throw an item in, it comes out the other side just like that. Pretty cool. <laughs> now, let's say I want this. And the, you can use this to transport items across large locations um, as an example. or I've got a hungry chest here which will eat items that are nearby, which I accidentally just threw that the wrong way. <laughs> but um, let's say, look in here, we've got 64 elementum, 11 jar labels, and an essential resonator. Let's go up here and throw this mirror through, and it should pop into that other chest. There it is, because it just got eaten by that chest just like that. All right, now on to magic hand mirrors. These are especially cool in my opinion. You put a regular one on the wall and a magic hand mirror, and now they're established. So therefore, if you right click with this, you have a mirror, you can put items in it, and they will pop through the other side. You can see it just came through. Let's see if I can get that to, uh, so you can actually see it. There we go. Now I'm gonna drop these 43 water arrows in there again. You can see they just pop through right in here. Everything's just popping through there. It only works the one direction. So you could actually have this uh, like above a hungry chest. And uh, when your inventory gets full, you can just throw in a whole bunch of stuff and it'll spit it back out into your hungry chest and give you a little bit more uh, inventory space. Or uh, just if somebody needs an item, you could have one of these back in base and you can toss it uh, through your magic, magic hand mirror. 
All right, and let's see here. Next, on to runic shielding. Here we have runic shielding. Now there's a base component and then there are several others that you can actually charge up. Now with runic shielding, these go in your baubles slots on your, uh, on your character, whoops, which is here. Now you'll notice that uh, usually I was having the uh, focus pouch on the belt area. So if you choose to uh, have a belt on there, you will have to take the focus pouch out, but you can still use it on your hotbar if you so desire. Uh, so for demonstration purposes, we're going to uh, not have that on there. So runic shielding. You can make uh, rings, amulets, and a uh, belt or girdle as it's referred to. And basically this gives you um, extra hit points in uh, when you're fighting uh, anything, but it the hit points, if you notice uh, over my hearts, the little runes are co slowly covering my uh, the hearts as they increase. That's runic shielding. You get uh, temporary hit points that will uh, only be uh, essentially function for taking damage from foes or other uh, enemies like that. If you end up uh, suffering drowning damage or environmental damage, it's not going to protect you from that. It will actually um, just ignore that and you will take normal damage from it, uh, like suffocation or something of that nature. But uh, to give an example here, we're going to spawn a spider and get him upset. And he will attack, and you notice my hearts aren't going down, but the runic shielding is. Alright, that's enough out of you. And then over time it will end up going back up. Now it actually drains V from a band, from my um, uh, wand that I have in my inventory. And it will drain air and terra from there. So right now I have two wands just for uh, demonstration use. But if you notice, yeah, and that's uh, something else I'll show you in a minute why that actually just went up. But it did drain some of the uh, V out of the wand. So there is a cost to having the extra health, but then again, you're not taking health damage and it'll help you to uh, live longer. So uh, with there being amulets, rings, and uh, girdles, I will show you some upgrades to such. Um, now there is the amulet of emergency shielding, which uh, will... Um, as it says in here, I will click on it. It's uh, essentially slightly less charge. You notice it's seven. The other one I had was eight. Uh, but when it's breached, it will instantly add eight charge to your shield amount. Now this is not a hundred percent reliable. I've been I've tested this out a bunch, uh, but it does happen frequently. So if you watch my uh, runic shielding go down, there we go. We just got the effect. Yeah, there was a verbal cue, and the uh, it activated. So it it does work most of the time. There are times that it may not, though. Um, but there are others as well, like the charged ring and the revitalizing ring, which actually let me bring those up here. Charged ring actually will just increase the recharge speed of your uh, uh, ring of the uh, shielding so if you you can wear two of these now it is a little bit weaker the other one was plus five these are plus four but if you wear two of them it'll increase it by 50 percent so you can have really fast recharging uh, shields the other thing is the revitalizing one which will give you a regen effect for uh, a little bit there if your shields go down which um, I can show you that as well but I, th I think I'll just skip that one since it's just basically a regen effect but there is also the uh, kinetic girdle. This one here is pretty cool. Uh, allow me to spawn another spider and get into first person or third person view I guess and uh, we'll try getting this spider upset and you'll see actually I forgot there we go I needed to have my uh, shields re recharge a little bit. So <laughs> when your shields go down, an explosion that won't harm the terrain happens around you and does damage to any enemies nearby. Now it probably also will hurt uh, any friendlies too, so keep that in mind. But you've got some really cool options with your uh, rings, amulets, and uh, girdles that you could possibly have here. Now there is another item that I neglected to mention, and that is of utmost importance, and that is the this here, 
the uh, primal charm. Now it is a little bit of a pain to make with the balance shard in there cause, uh, and the cost and everything involved but you just need to make one for now. And essentially what that's going to do is while in your inventory, it doesn't have to be on your hotbar, just in your inventory, you will on occasion get little uh, orbs dropping on the ground from um, just yourself I guess if, uh, if you understand that. When you kill an enemy, let's bring one of these guys out here you'll often see there's a little globe right there and uh, you'll drop these little V globes from yourself randomly. It'll be one of the five, uh, six primary aspects from your wand. There we go, six primary aspects of your wand and that's why you saw uh, up in the corner there that the um, one of the aspects went up while I was just standing still. Uh, so I do recommend this because you're going to want to get these so that you don't have to recharge your wand as often. Now it's not very much, but in starting out it's very key so that you uh, can get those last one or two bits of V for free just by having one of these in your inventory. So, and we have the arcane lamp which is also going to be used to make a lamp of growth and a lamp of fertility. Now these all have very different uses. The arcane lamp uh, is made in the arcane workbench with a daylight sensor, amber blocks, some iron and night ore, plus a few uh, aspects here. Uh, but let me show you what it actually does. So you see how dark it is right now around me and I'm going to put it down here and it lights up a good area but it continues to light up the area around. It keeps going out further and further but it's not gonna light up everything but it will light up quite a bit in a large radius. Now here's the other thing. I can cover it up and it still lights up. It will actually penetrate through thin walls as well and it will go down tunnels uh, a lot more effective than it will just lighting one circular area. But over time it will end up placing little invisible torches uh, and uh, light the entire area. So it's pretty cool. Now the uh, next ones the lamp of growth, which is made as such, is essentially used for uh, speeding plant growth. Uh, specifically crops is usually what people end up using it for. And the lamp of fertility will end up uh, adding romance to the air for uh, animal breeding. Now let's get on over here and I will show you how that works. Uh, first, let me change it back to daytime just so everybody can see better. All right, so you can use essential mirrors. I just put this here for demonstration purposes, but I also did this so that you can see what's going on. Now, this lamp of growth is currently powered with uh, herba, I believe, and you can therefore plant stuff nearby. And you should see it actually do it. It's doing like this little glowing effect right now, and it will actually speed the growth of plants around it at the cost of herba. Now you can see the little uh. particle effects actually happening on the plants, there we go, as it speeds uh. their growth. Now I'm in the middle of the desert right now, sure it does have a bucket of water, but you can see it's definitely going at a pretty good pace. This is just for some herba, which you can get from you know most plants in the world, which are a renewable resource. Uh, now the other one, fertility, once uh. I power this one up, you can see it actually will start making these guys <laughs> breed without the use of uh, needing to give them uh, wheat or anything else. Now this should work for most uh, animals that breed. It's not going to work on villagers in my experience, but uh, it does work on most uh, like sheep or pigs or anything of that nature. So um, that about does it for that one as well. It looks like there's only one thing left. The infernal Furnace. But before then, we're just going to do a little quick item, as I lied, saying that there was only one thing left, and that's the Arcane Levitator <laughs> and the uh, ar Warded Arcana. So let me get on over there real quick. All right, here we are back where I have that little hole. Now, if you notice, when I stand here, I'm kind of floating. If I hold Shift, I actually sink down, and then I can walk off. Now, if I break this you'll notice I have underneath an arcane levitator. 
Now this will uh, allow you to float up or down about 10 blocks. And you can actually stack them so that they can push you even further. Pressing shift while on them will have you descend, while just standing on them will have you ascend. Now you can actually have them launch items as well. Just like that, they will uh, launch items in the air. You could play around with these if you end up really getting crazy. Uh, I know I've made like a floating entire floating areas before that were just kind of fun to fly around in, but then you have to be wary of uh, fall damage. But um, uh, just a little something that uh, I thought would be uh, pretty cool to have here. Um, sometimes they can just help you get to areas. They can be creative ways of getting to your next floor and your base. Uh, however you want to do that. Now let's get into the uh, warded arcane, warded arcana. This here you can make a warded door, which is just like warded glass uh, in the fact that uh, it's not going to be um, uh, breakable and the only person that can go through it is its owner, so the person who put it there. But you can also make uh, keys so that other people can get through it if you so desire. Therefore, if you're playing on a server, um, you can um, uh, you can actually give certain people access to it like if you're playing a, like a couple of friends but you don't want everybody else on the server access to it uh, plus uh, it's not going to be re removed like other warded uh, items uh, as well where um, if you try and use ward removal uh, it's not going to work only the owners can do so and um, and then of course you've got your uh, arcane pressure, pressure plates so you can have doors open and close at your touch as well. And uh, then last but not least we're going to do the infernal furnace and arcane bellows. And here we are with the infernal furnace. Uh, so this one here is a multi-block structure. You'll have to make three layers involving obsidian, nether, uh, nether brick, excuse me, iron bars and a bit of lava in the center plus a lot of Ignis and Terra in your wand. It's pretty much going to use up everything you've got in your uh, gold banded uh, great wood wand. And th what this does, you, first of all, you probably want this outside because it's possible while making this furnace and using it that it could leak some flux into the world. So therefore if anything escapes into the top, you want it to go out in that direction. Um, but otherwise, uh, I have created a post here so I can create this in the middle of the air so that you can better see what I'm doing, as well as you can see the benefits of what could happen, uh, how you could use it underneath. So you start off by making a plus symbol in the cent uh, on the bottom. Then you do the same again here, but you're kind of making a front face, as well as adding more nether bricks. And then more nether bricks and same plus symbol on the top that was on the bottom but you leave an opening in the middle of which you put a lava bucket in and excuse me there you go you take your wand which hopefully has enough V in it no it does not I need to get a new fresh wand you can see how you need a lot of V in your wand all the time then you just right click it and you've got yourself an infernal furnace. Now this guy is pretty darn cool. He is essentially free. You don't, um, well I mean not his building materials, but anything you put in there is free for him to uh, cook. You don't need any fuel for it whatsoever. Uh, and I've got a few examples here of different things that you can cook. Now I do recommend also making arcane bellows in order to best get him uh, going. Now this, these are just simple in the arcane workbench. They're not very expensive at all. And you can fit him with these on the sides. Oops, let's get rid of that rain. And it will speed him along as well as the bottom. This is why I lifted him up. Now you're going to want to leave the top open so that you can insert items. Now you can also put an item grate up there, uh, which is part of Thomcraft as well, but we're not going to get into that today. Uh, and let's see here. I'm going to put, once again, a hungry chest on the front because any items that you cook with him will spit out the front and just appear in the world, as well as a lot of experience. This is a really good way of getting experience. So first, let me toss in some iron ore. I'll toss in four nuggets 
And you can actually, as the book states, you can uh, feed him Ignis to have him speed things up considerably. He can really rip through these uh, these items once you end up uh, getting him, once you start feeding him uh, Essentia. But until then, I mean, this is free, and you saw that wasn't very fast, or that wasn't very uh, slow at all. That was pretty darn quick. And you saw that you got, it didn't double the ores, but it did end up giving you some extra iron nuggets. Now, if I toss in some food, like some raw beef, that should cook those as well. And you'll see the benefits of that. And then I'm going to toss in some gold clusters there, native gold clusters. And you'll see as it cooks the steaks, you get your four steaks. Hold on. There we go. Plus possible ben uh, bonuses which uh, can vary actually depending upon uh, how he goes. I mean I actually have last time I tried this out I got eight beef nuggets instead of two and I got two iron nuggets instead of four and this one with the native uh, clusters because they're native clusters it doubles the ore when you smelt it and you got five so you're essentially getting two and a bit uh, times your uh, items there which is really really cool and there's no fuel involved in this just a bunch of building materials for it. Now you can, like I said, include uh, Ignis on there so that he can um, just really rip through uh, stuff, but I think he, he uh, takes care of things quite fast enough in my opinion. So uh, that pretty much does it for today. So I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. If so, please give me a like, comment, or subscribe. And until next time, see ya! All right, let me get this out of here. Blah, too far.